Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be welcoming today Rolls Royce, head of corporate communications for Central and Northern Europe, Wood, Hutlenbosch, and from the Rolls Royce Design Studio, Zina Maria Egel. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Zina. Hello, Welcome. Everyone. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. And uh, I'm happy to have all of you as well from Periscope, from Twitter, from Facebook, and from YouTube. Hello, Tillman, Vigit. Hi. Bonjour, Kiva. <laughs> Bonjour à tous. Bienvenue. Uh, so this will be in English. Uh, so I'm, I will start uh, with uh, some, some, some numbers. And last year at Rolls-Royce, you had a record sale of over 5,000 cars sold and nearly 100 of them were bespoke creations. Uh, so I'm just going before I let you comment on that route. Uh, I'm just going to quote your CEO, Thorsten Müller Edvus, uh, who said, Rolls Royce is not in the car mar market, but in the luxury good market. So this is interesting. And he says it's not about fulfilling. It's about fulfilling a personal dream, commissioning a piece of art. So Rolls Royce is more than a car. It's a piece of art. It is that, indeed. Is that right? That is, that, that is absolutely correct. It's, it is not about when you decide to buy a Rolls Royce, you uh, might not think about um, another car, which could be any other car. So you think, will I have a Rolls Royce or am I going to buy a new piece of jewelry or another piece of art? And it's not only driving from A to B, Rolls-Royce is more kind of a lifestyle. And is Rolls-Royce is bespoke. Indeed, as you said before, that almost 100% uh, of all cars leaving the factory in Goodwood are not looking the same. So bespoke allows our customers to make their motor cars as unique as their own fingerprint. In that res respect, Rolls-Royce is, is a blank canvas from the beginning where you, the customers start to commission um, their pers the personal touches inspired by their tastes and lifestyle and, of course, their businesses. And bespoke can be anything from the customer's initial stitched into the headrest, uh, unique colors and features. So the bandwidth, for example, of colors is more than 400. 44,000 colors and of course wow. we, we create picnic sets um, and with the customer's imagination being the limitation. So this is now where, where Sina comes into the game. So picnic sets, yes, let's show it because uh, this is what Zina created a couple of years ago. True, yeah. Very, it was very impressive. Thank you. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. No, it was actually my very, very first product I designed for Rolls Royce. So it will always be deeply in my heart. Um, so I, I must just add something. You are a pure Rolls Royce product, right? You did all I your have. career so far uh, at Rolls Royce. Exactly. Rolls Royce <laughs> raised me. Um, I, I came to the Rolls Royce design team when I was 21 years old. So a really young girl and since then i'm 29 years old now i've been working for different departments within the design team i've touched on accessory design where i designed the cocktail hamper i did commission collection where we created the gallery for example and now i'm working for coach build and series design and so i've i've had different eras in those times but they've all been so lovely and and beautiful and unique and um, the cocktail hamper, for example, was, as I mentioned, my very first product. And it was particularly funny because, um, of course, when you do a lifestyle product, you have to do a lot of research. And that research included, of course, going to London's best bars and spending a lot of time with the barkeepers <laughs> and observing them <laughs> and chatting to them <laughs> at 11 o'clock in the morning. And Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we, we sat together um, they taught me how to use the different tools, what is needed to create the perfect cocktail and um, what made what would make things even more effortless. And this is how I got all my research together um, I visited member clubs, the best hotels, bars 
And when I was done with my research, I started sketching and, and designing. And the result was this beautiful hamper, which is a limited edition of 15 pieces. And it's sold out by now, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but um, um, yeah, we worked together with um, a crystal glass brand called Theresienthal, which did those lovely decanters for us. And it, like every piece in this hamper is unique and beautiful. This, this hamper has a price, right? It's uh, <laughs> it's it's very unique and beautiful, but it has a price as well. But well, uh, can, can we mention the price or? Sure, you can mention the price. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, I think it's over forty thousand euros, right? Um, I think so. Yeah. That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, it's it's all about exclusive products that well it's a it, this is rolls royce spirit actually it's very exclusive but and uh, it's uh it's a it's work of art it. as well yes it's <laughs> worth it exactly yeah. actually really uh, cheap for what is in <laughs> so you there is not only a uh, picnic hampers of course uh there is a lot uh, about uh other things in in a, in a rolls royce when we talk about bespoke design and uh, there is the um, there are the galleries so there are a lot of different galleries and uh, I'm going to show, let's, we could talk, I think you work, you personally work on uh, the Immortal Beauty Gallery. Exactly. So, Can you tell us about it? Because the, the whole story is exciting. Yeah, of course. Um, so our new Phantom has this beautiful piece in the fascia of the car where all the different um, people who drive in the Rolls Royce can actually have a look. And it's um, this beautiful uninterrupted piece of glass which gave us the opportunity for the very first time to use materials that usually wouldn't pass any of our material testings. And this uh, made us use porcelain. And um, when we decided to go for porcelain, we wanted to create something incredibly delicate and what isn't more delicate like flour. And um, so when we decided to go for a flower, next question of course is what kind of flower? You can't just go for any kind of flower. And we decided to go for an English rose, which is a synonym for English beauty and elegance as our car brand is. And um, then, of course, you can't go for any normal rose or English rose. So we decided to breed a Rolls Royce rose. And so I spent a lot of time in my wellies on a field in the middle of the UK um, with UK's best um, rose breeders to create a rose which embodies the whole spirit of Rolls Royce. And out came this picture, what you just showed, this beautiful, beautiful rose. Um, which is purely white and it has a lot of petals. It's incredibly simple, but really voluminous. And the second when we finished the rose um, and I saw the final re result, we flew it to Southern Germany, to Bavaria, to Nymphenburg Palace, where we have the Nymphenburg manufacturer and they recreated that rose into por porcelain, which is absolutely stunning. Um, we also, I'm going to show it. Yes, it's it's beautiful. What you can also see on that picture is that we use black porcelain as well. And what I have learned in cooperation with Nymphenburg is that black porcelain is actually even more um, precious than white porcelain. And combining those two materials together and burning them at the same heat was an incredibly difficult task for us because porcelain shrinks a lot. And I'm really, really prou proud to say that we achieved this task and that we were able to burn both materials at the same time. And it has been a phenomenon. And we are really, really happy that so many customers loved the gallery and are now recreating it with their own flowers. It's beautiful. Thank you. And uh, so here you have uh, the Immortal Beauty Gallery, but you did it with metal as well. We also did a metal gallery. Um, what you can see over here is different layers of metal. We can work really, really three dimensional in the gallery because it's quite deep. And so we showcase different finishes on the metal. It can be gold, it can be brushed, it can be whatever the customer is asking for. We can use gouache, which is usually um, used when it comes to clock faces. You can exactly, um, which is in, in um, only in high jewelry use. And um, we created all those different pieces and collections and we really had fun and played with it and tried to 
cover as much fun and creativity as possible to give our customers the 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 task somehow to challenge us with new ideas and come back with new ideas that we could integrate into the gallery beautiful and we have also the iridescence uh gallery so this is with feathers this time exactly a feather is a material that you usually couldn't bring into a car because it's so delicate and it needs to have protection and with the iridescent opulence gallery we created this beautiful art piece and used over 3000 hand picked feathers and <laughs> it just showcases the pure nature of the feather we didn't add any color nothing we just showed, showed the pure nature of it and it's arranged in a circular way around the, the clock the centerpiece of the gallery and as you can tell, it has those beautiful iridescent green and blue and black and purple colors. So it's a true masterpiece. Um, and the making was incredibly fun as well, because yeah, first of all, you have to select the perfect 3000 feathers and then all cut them into the right shape and sew them onto the fabric and then adjust them to the back panel. So it's a lot of work and a lot of patience that we, patience that we requested from our craftsmen, but it was, it was worth it. <laughs> But with those galleries, actually only the imagination is the limit. You can order anything. It's up to the customer to choose what he wants to put in the gallery, right? Absolutely. He Absolutely. Yeah. Ruth? Yeah, he can just decide whatever he wants to put behind the gallery. He can take a picture or his own piece of art, which he wants to see while every day driving. I, um, it, I think it was last year at the Geneva Motor Show, uh, you featured uh, a gallery with DNA, I'm going to show it, and that was quite <laughs> impressive too, because it was, well, you're, done, you're not you're going to tell me about it, but um, it's about the customer, the customer's DNA, right? It's a logarithm that we developed where we ask the customers different questions and depending on the outcome of the questions, the pattern is going to be 3D printed in a different manner. So every single gallery which is 3D printed in that way is unique to the customer and will reflect their own kind of like life DNA, yes. C'est du no limit, oui, Olivier, tout à fait. Bonjour, je, je, je m'interromps deux minutes pour dire bonjour à tout le monde. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello, Patrick. Hello, Olivier. Hi, everyone. And yes, yes, it's no limit. So you can put anything in your Rolls Royce, even personal objects or not. But what, uh... Of course, you can put personal objects behind it. Okay, so that's, yes, this is really uh, no limit and this is really um, very much personalized. Um, I was uh, looking at, uh, at a Rolls Royce that was made for a Swedish uh, billionaire and uh, he said, well, he, he was very much into roses, no, not those uh, Nymphenburg roses, but other roses. And he said he would never uh, sell his Rolls Royce because it was so personal. It was like uh, other uh, pieces of art in his collection. He's an art collector as well. So this is this is part of an art collection. Rolls Royce is part of an art collection, right? It's absolutely true. Um, we've noticed that the customers are collecting a lot of art in their airplanes, private jets, in their houses or yachts. And Rolls Royce itself is an is an art piece. Um, and uh, we have a lot of car collectors which collect those unique um, configurations. And it's 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 incredibly fun for the design team to be part of this of this lifestyle story of the customers. So you have uh, collaborations with uh, famous artists as well. And I'm thinking about uh, one you had with a South African artist. And I'm going to, uh, to show a short, very short video of it. <laughs> so you, you have such collaborations as well. So here that was with a South African uh, artist. Can you tell me about it? Um, it's Dr. Easter Malangu, and she has been a South African artist for, I think, over 80 years now. And it's, it's the perfect combination of cultural heritage combined with modern luxury. And um, you can see all these incredibly beautiful geometric pieces that she painted onto the back panel of the gallery. Uh, it's really bold and, and abstract and colorful and um, 
the in the rest of the interior was in adjusted to the gallery so everything is facing um the gallery and it's just exactly what we wanted to achieve with it is that customers come with their own ideas artists come with their ideas and everybody can just express and have fun and and be provocative and creative uh, so uh, who's i um I was telling you the other day that um, I would never have imagined 20 years ago buying Rolls Royce. Well, if I could afford it, of course, because <laughs> I thought Rolls Royce was for old people. But now I'm very much into Rolls Royce. And uh, well, either I get older or uh, there was a shift in design. <laughs> I think it was a shift in design. <laughs> I, I would say so. That's definitely a shift in design. Yeah, when, was we, when was that? When was that? I think we started quite well. Um, BMW took over the brand uh, in 1998 and uh, the first Phantom came out under the aegis of BMW in 2003 with the first Phantom and then followed by the Ghost, which was more the, the, the business limousine and which is more contemporary. And as you can see on the images, um, the design has become more and more modern and we approached more and more younger customers over the years. So if you imagine that the average age of Rolls-Royce customer nowadays is around 45 years. Compared, com, uh, com, compared with other brands, um, it's very, very young. I think even Mini has a higher average age than Rolls-Royce has. Especially so when it, you think of the price of the car, it's uh, exactly it's, it's a very young exactly. age indeed. Indeed, yes. yeah, we've become quite cool. In <laughs> you <then> have, <laughs> you have, and uh, talking about cool, uh, the Kellinen black badge is really, really cool. Could be a Batman car, actually. I'm going to show it. Yeah, the, the Cullinan is incredibly cool and uh, the design team, first of all, I have to say the design team of Rolls Royce is incredibly young as well. The average age of uh, the design team is about 30 years old. So I think this also showcases why the, the design becomes so young, probably. Um, <laughs> But what we what we loved about um, Black Bad, um, or what we were inspired of by Black Bad, um, was actually streetwear, and um, we loved this whole fashion of streetwear, this whole aesthetic, and we loved the colorways that were used on on the streets. And it's not opulent, but it's certainly a lot more striking. And it's in the same way, um, like people are using streetwear clothes. It's more comfortable. It's more drivable. Um, than a formal attire that you usually would wear when you go into a Rolls Royce Phantom. And uh, Black Badge becomes even more drivable. And with Cullinan, it is this great combination of clean, big surfaces and, and this beautiful, detailed uh, three-dimensional carbon fiber that we can see on the decor surfaces. And this really, really vibrant oh, and strong forged this, this yellow. Is, oh yes, it's, the leather is beautiful. Yeah, and what you can see over here on this detail is carbon fiber, three-dimensional, which it looks stunning, absolutely stunning. And um, the leather that you can also see on the lower IP over here is in this really vibrant and strong, strong forged yellow that we developed especially for um, Colin and Black Batch. And it's unapologetic in elegance, we think, and also has a little bit of romance inside. You can see the starlit headliner. Yes, um, what, tell me about that uh, headliner. So the Starline headliner has over a thousand stars. And I'm always doing the Starlight headliners. Every single Starlight headliner is unique. But of course, I have to set some ground rules to the creation of the Starlight headliner. And it also now has shooting stars. So once in a while, there's wow. a tiny shooting star. And you can also make a tiny wish when you see one. Um, wow, this is, this is neat, yeah. Yeah, but you have over a thousand um, stars and I know every single one of them. I've counted them several times by eye, which is a real pain, um, <laughs> but it's absolutely beautiful and gives the whole headline a lot more depth and, and romance in the car. It creates this beautiful, beautiful environment. So we have the, the black badge, of course. Uh, everything about it is black, except uh, the braid calipers. 
<laughs> you can <laughs> with, this, <laughs> with this hero configuration we went all black yes also the chrome is black in this car and you have the carbon fiber of course but um oh. our customers are king and so if they desire to go with a different color we are happy to do so um we are incredibly happy for all this creativity the customers have been um given us and 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 trusting us so we will do whatever the customers are requesting and so yeah we will see what comes out with this car i uh last year again at the geneva motor show you uh features a kalinin with a picnic space at the back of the kalinin so you can have a glass of champagne uh while looking at the sunsets in the middle of nowhere so this is this is a really really neat as well. It is, it is. You can actually sit down and rest and enjoy the beautiful view when you go to a polo polo game or when you are in the middle of the mountains and just sit down and enjoy the moment and calm down and relax and, and just purely um yeah, enjoy. And it has two beautiful seats, it has a place where you can put your champagne and um it, the whole mechanic is done beautifully and materials that are used are absolutely stunning so i can only recommend trying it out on the next trip maybe this oh, in the middle of the <laughs> desert as well <laughs> can be in the middle of the desert <laughs> doesn't look that romantic but <laughs> Otherwise, I, I uh, stumbled upon a couple of incredible uh, creations, bespoke creations I would like to show. And among those, there is that Fabergé egg uh, spirit of ecstasy. This, this is just incredible. It is absolutely beautiful. It was done in cooperation with Fabergé. And it's just absolutely unique. All the materials that have been used are absolutely precious. It's a true, true unique art piece and um, belongs to one of our customers um, that I know in person who is stunning and who truly loves it as well. And uh, we are incredibly great as a design team to have been able to do this cooperation with Fabergé. Uh, someone is asking me uh, if uh, the black badge is uh, that Vador's car for Star Wars Day. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> could be indeed, yes, it could be. <laughs> oh, should be. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I found some other beautiful spirit of ecstasy. This one, this this is crystal. It can be back illuminated actually. So you have this beautiful really? spirit of ecstasy. Yes. When you are driving, you can always see the spirit of ecstasy on front of the bonnet and it always guides your way. So it's a beautiful thing to drive around it and it's Truly, truly iconic to have the spirit of ecstasy and um we are all always inspired by her um the the sculpture itself was um created um by uh, with the um um with the um uh, they wanted to create elena thornton um who was a society lady and they recreated her into this sculpture and um, since that day she has been crowning every single rolls royce and we are incredibly proud to have her and she's our spirit and um, keeps us motivated. And, and we can also have them in, in stainless steel. You can have them in rose gold or in yellow gold. You can do whatever you want to do with them. Exactly. Yes, rose gold. Yes. Beautiful. Exactly. So our customers are really playing around with her. And uh, yes, there was here. It, here it, it was as well. That was uh, that was two years ago at uh, at the Geneva Motor Show. Rose gold, and it was a rose, a pale rose, uh, rose rose. It was just totally amazing. Uh, and here, oh, I wanted to show it to you that that one was in can in diamonds. You can have it in diamonds as well. <laughs> <laughs> so everything is possible. It's unlimited. It's bespoke. Um, well, to uh, to finish, I would like uh, you to tell me about uh, the next step. What is the trend in the future at Rolls Royce? Talking about design, of course. I think the design studio um, has experienced for some time now this. Or we have thought about um, this topic of post opulence a lot, 
And, you know, traditionally our exterior design has been full of grandeur and, and, and presence. And the ethos of the interior has always been to reflect the owner. And of course, if our customers want to go for something more eclectic, they are happy to do so. We love to work on those projects because they are always a lot of fun. But in general, we have noticed this trend towards this post-opulent owner and, and style. And this celebrates simplicity and, and restraint. And I think our future cars, they will always have this commanding presence. But they will do so without blinding onlookers, onlookers without, with any um, unnecessary bling or, uh, or any unnecessary flourishes or something like that. I think it is our duty as designers to, to offer a subtle guidance to owners to ensure that the motor car maintains its restraint. Um, I think simple designs are incredibly difficult to achieve because you have very little less or you have a lot less lines to play with to create those beautiful interiors. But we have challenged ourselves with it. And um, if you are successful, it showcases true perfection and um, it creates this tranquil environment and enables all occupants to really calm down and and it smooths the busy mind. We have we have noticed that our customers are working really hard. They're busy all the time. They're traveling. They're having a million phone calls, and we wanted to create this environment, this you know oyster somehow, <laughs> where you can calm down, where you can think or think a deeper thought, and where you can have deep conversations inside. And this will reflect our future design. Difficult to imagine. Um... A minimalistic interior for Rolls Royce, but uh, I'm very curious about it. But uh, sounds sounds great. Um, someone is asking, do you create furniture or artwork for home as well? Me personal. You personally, yeah. yes, or maybe Rolls Royce. Do 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 you create as Rolls Royce some objects uh, for home? Yes, we have, for example, the cocktail hamper is an item that you can use at home. Um, we've also done luggages or um, picnic hampers. Um, we have uh, different sets of, of um, accessories um, in terms of fashion. And um, so, yes, Rolls Royce can follow you into your home and, and inspire you in your home as well. So to, as a conclusion, well, uh, first of all, thanks a lot. Thanks to, to the two of you. Uh, just Thank wanted, you. I, 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 I found an article about uh, something really, uh, really curious uh, the other day. And um, well, Rose Royce has just resumed production. I think it was yesterday or two days ago. But during that uh, crisis, that sanitary crisis time, you were not producing uh, cars, you were producing honey. <laughs> That's correct. We do have our own bee beehives on on the estate of, of the uh, of the plant in Goodwood. Yes, I I, I I had never heard of it, but I I think it's the third season. Uh, you're producing honey, and here it is. Yeah, it's it's not that much, but we are gaining more and more every year. That's absolutely <laughs> nice. Nice story. And why why does uh, Rolls Royce produce honey actually? What is the link um, with the with the brand? Is it's it not directly the link to the brand? It's just that uh, the Goodwood Estate is um, is a natural reservoir where we are based, and so we try to be as natural as possible. And then we decided why not put some beehives into our gardens and Great. produce it here. Well, I have one last question uh, for you, Ruth. Uh, do you make electric retrofits for Rolls Royce? Electro retrofits? Not yet. No, Rolls Royce is becoming electric definitely in, in the next uh, couple of years. Really? Yes. Wow. We, we, had, we have shown a one off already in 2011, a true electric Phantom which uh, we have presented, of course, to our customers and to, to a couple of journalists. And we will become fully electric, no hybrids. And this will happen in the next couple of years. Okay, great. 
Well, thank you, Ruth. Uh, thank you, Zina, thank you. for that chat about uh, bespoke design at Rolls Royce. Uh, I will be very happy to host on Wednesday Jean Pierre Dagit, so that will be in French. So, the, the host of the French TV show Automoto, and we'll be talking about cars again. And uh, well, thanks, thanks a lot. A lot of success with the post minimalismus, post opulence trend uh, at Rolls Royce. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about it when, uh, when you're ahead of it. We'll talk again about it. Exactly. <laughs> thank, thank you. you Merci à tous thank, you. thank you, everyone, for following. Uh, be my guest, and I will be back on Wednesday. Thank you. Bye-bye.